Got you. So you go in when you get sentenced to prison. You sentenced to how long? Well, I never, I never got caught. To where I ended up getting a life sentence in California up under the California Three Strikes Law in '94. But at this time, uh, a robbery was sixteen, two, and three. Okay, got you. Uh, uh, a robbery with a gun, two, three, four, four, five, six. So you had determined sentences. So uh, at that time, you could go in and out. But as I started getting the violent robberies and stuff, I ended up getting like 10 years, might do six or seven. I was going back and forth on what we call the installment plan. Okay, so when you start hearing about this three-strike law being passed, did everybody really recognize what it was, what it was for, how it was going to really impact? No, nah, well, first of all, didn't nobody even know it was a law because people forget it was signed as an emergency measure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't voted on. All the, the governor did was took a strike of a pencil and he signed it in as an emergency measure. But when you really think about it, it was the election year and they seen that tough on crime garnered votes. That was Mike Reynolds' daughter who got it so. When the three strikes law came out, it came out March 7th, 1994. But there was no warning that it was out. They just signed it overnight. And I got arrested, say, March the 11th. I'm in there for $2 worth of dope. And uh, we standing up here and they say, uh, uh, Mr. Foreman, you being arrested where well, you know you come up to under this new law that could get a life sentence. So if you read the newspaper article, I tell them, uh, you got the wrong name up here, man. I'm only in here for a couple of dollars worth of dope. I ain't got no murder case. And he say, no, nah, this new three strikes law. And if you look at the paper, they'll say I ran and was running through the court. I was gone because I knew they had set me up. Uh -huh. I don't even sell it. So uh, that law, most people didn't know. Then when they seen the piece of man put us, us in paper, but all of us were nonviolent, non-serious offenses. We didn't have no violent offense. And we didn't have the opportunity that people that didn't have no uh, prior offenses, they get three times to mess up. But because this law was retroactive, that means all my priors from 75, 76 make me automatically eligible at that time to where you automatically had to get 25 years to life. Yeah. So I ended up with 25 years plus a consecutive sentence and end up becoming the first one to uh, ever get released up under the three strikes from a life sentence in 1997. And then I co-authored, I wrote a book called The New Slave Ship, Three Strikes You In, uh, Not Out, which uh, depicts the, uh, uh, this prison industrial complex and predicted the mass incarceration that it is now. Back in, I did that in 97, 98. And that book's still relevant today. So when you get this, you stand before courts and, and they give you this sentence of 25 years, like, what is going through your mind? Well... A real convict, and there's a difference between a convict and an inmate. Big difference. Explain that for me real quick. An inmate gonna go to prison, he gonna buck, he gonna work, he gonna do what the fuck they say. A convict gonna go there and do what the fuck he want, regardless of whatever you say. I wasn't working on the streets. <clears throat> I'm not programming, and that's our get out. They don't mind fucking off the police. You see them bragging over here, particularly these guys, oh, I caught a fade in the county. You couldn't never hear us talk about that. You would see we hear us caught a body in the county oh, against the police, but not where we gonna fight for the police and do some entertainment for them to sit and watch. I was in Corcoran. Google the Corcoran murders, where they was letting the BGF, the, uh, no, the Mexican mafia, the ABs, where they letting us out uh, in isolation. Uh, in control movements where we in a shoe program, security house and walk along and you'll be a black out there and they'll let them out like lions and you fight them off and you get killed. Google it. So they was killing us. So at the end of the day, the game was different down there back then. And uh, you had to really stand up for that stuff, man. You really did. So it wasn't, we didn't have time to... Uh, 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 be bragging uh, or trying to, uh, we had to really survive in there to where they were really after the young guys. So there's a big difference between being an inmate and a convict. So my mindset is this, 
to get back to what happens when I go to court. I already know I'm fit to get found guilty. I already know that it's a mandatory 25 year to life sentence. So what I did do is start every time I go to court, putting something on paper to where I might be able to peel it. Did you say you was the police when you ran and did a warrantless search? I had my lawyer ask that question and that's why I sit here today. So you don't go in pouting about you're going to get found guilty. You're working to set yourself up to where that question get put on that paper that you might can get back. So when they told me I was getting 25 years to life, I didn't feel nothing because I looked at it like this. It's a lot of shit that you get away with, money, hustling, and you don't pay taxes. But when you hustling and you don't pay taxes, you pay taxes by going to jail and they take it out your ass. <laughs> so I just looked at it like, hey, I don't got away with a lot of shit. Maybe this one something I'm gonna have to ride. That's how the game go. So what was the loophole or what you ended up finding that got you out to being the first one to beat that three strike? Well, what happened was they did a warrantless search, same way Breonna Taylor <laughs> got killed. That's called a warrantless search, a no knock notice. Uh, when you lock your door, you have a right to expectations uh, when you lock that door to privacy. Uh, it's only three ways that they can enter that house. Uh, the house on fire, you got chased, or they think you're destroying drugs or something like that. So they had been having me under surveillance for 90 days up under uh, uh, DEA, drug agencies, and uh, robbery homicide, because at that time, we jackins. We still doing what we do. And so they had been trailing me, but they I wasn't doing nothing. I already had hit where at that time I'm sitting on $250,000 cash. I already don't hit a lick for 40 keys. <laughs> so I'm already balling. I ain't worrying about nothing but waking up. That's my only problem, waking up. And uh, so they trailing me and stuff. And then the day three strikes come out, they do a warrantless search where when you do a warrantless search, you have to announce. It's called a no knock notice. You have to say, bam police. You can't go. Bam, police. It got to go police then. That's called a no knock. So usually the police will lie and they'll say, well, did you do a no knock notice? They'll say, yeah, we gave them notice. But it was a rookie cop that went first in my case. And my lawyer was like Columbo. He was fit to walk off and he said, oh, did y'all make an announcement before y'all knock? And we was walking away thinking, we know he gonna say yeah. But when he said no, I knew I had a chance. Cause you, they didn't have no warrant. And uh, we ended up filing an appeal. Uh, took me three and a half years where usually don't nobody get out from LA with a life sentence, no less than 28, 30 years, where there's a very few get to come home on a reversal from a life sentence. So I was very blessed in that regard.